United absolutely obliterate Bournemouth. That was a good that was a good result, innit? That was a very, very interesting match. And um quite possibly a good indication as to how far uh, how far along United are in the current transformation that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is currently bringing to the team. Um I think it's fair to say, right? Is it fair to say, is it, ooh, where are you? Oh, it's going to change. I think it's fair to admit right now that we probably got it wrong about Oli, didn't we? In terms of what he was trying to do with the club. We probably all got it wrong collectively. I think we need to kind of hold our hands up. I think it's pretty obvious, right? We've seen that he's probably not going to be the most tactically astute manager, right? He's not going to, you know, be able to make changes in the first half when we're losing 3 0 to sort of like change the tide of the game. He probably won't be able to improve really basic players in the same way that Jurgen Klopp has done with people like Henderson and, you know, um, Trent Alexander-Arnold and even, to a lesser extent, um, what's his name? Oh, the striker up front, the black dude. I forgot anyway, but, you know, Solskjaer is never going to be Pep Guardiola. He's never going to be Mourinho in his pomp. He's probably never going to be Klopp in terms of how he improves players. But what we can see so far is that what he's good at and what he's probably been perfect for is because he's a United legend, because he has quite a personable personality and he comes across really well. Um, he's always smiling. He's always kind of happy that he has a job sort of thing. Right? He's just grateful to be in that position. He's a complete... Um, opposite of how it must have been working under Jose Mourinho right especially the last season before he got fired um he was obviously quite dour influence in the dressing room in some parts he was pretty toxic and he pitted players against each other which I didn't necessarily like and we didn't necessarily have the players or the characters needed that could basically withstand that level of psychological torment right or kind of pressure that he was trying to probe and prod them so to a reaction but they're just not good enough to play at, at that time right and you saw his treatment with Luke Shaw you just you know you knew Luke Shaw didn't have the temperament or the whatever or to kind of respond well to that sort of um you know accusations that's not something that he's going to do really really well so what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did really well which I think is something that needs to be highlighted a lot more is that he came in and essentially was able to be the proverbial arm around the shoulder right he was able to kind of lift up the players give them a give them an opportunity to play without any you know without feeling as if there was any pressure right they got to play for fun they got to really express themselves especially the first um few matches when the obvious tenure you really saw the impact that Solskjaer had over the squad and then over a period of time he hit a bit of a wall the players just couldn't necessarily pick up their levels they just had a ceiling that they could hit and now we've seen with the addition of good players right and with the addition of players coming back from injury and the addition of being able to pick a consistent team he has this team playing a really, really good football. And that's something that we have to really kind of acknowledge. So Solskjaer might not be Mourinho, he might not be Klopp, he might not be Pep Guardiola, but what he is is a very good manager because that's able, or a really good man manager that's able to kind of do well as long as he's got the players. So if the board want us to get back to the top, if they want us back to challenging for a Premier League title, challenging for a Champions League, they're going to need to get him the best players possible. The players that match, obviously, the overall culture that he's going for, you can see he wants people he would obviously prefer players that are going to bleed for the badge but that's kind of you know it's, it's a bit unrealistic to expect everyone to come in and be a fan of united but he at least wants players that actually want to be there and he also wants players that are willing to sort of sacrifice themselves for their teammates right they're willing to sort of like put their own ego to one side as we've seen with paul pogba for instance right paul pogba has essentially um occupied this position of deep lining midfielder right he's in a two midfield pivot Right, right in front of the centre backs, where he kind of you know swaps position between him and Matic, but Matic is probably the one that falls a bit deeper. Popper sort of acts like the quarterback role, but he's been very disciplined. He sort of reminds me of the way he played with France in the World Cup. He picks up the ball, he breaks between the lines, he pushes balls between the lines, he cuts balls over the top. He just keeps on moving over, tickling in a really good and efficient way in midfield, which allows someone like Bruno Fernandes, who probably has a little bit more of a knack of going forward, to attack the spaces and kind of assist the front three that we have at the moment that are just blistering, right? Mason Greenwood, um, Anthony Marshall, and obviously Ra Marcus Rashford, who's probably been a bit off the boil, but so far so good. And the Bournemouth game was a good example of that. I think in the games gone prior, once we went down, especially because we had the, we were putting the pressure on Bournemouth, we probably had most of the possession. We were kind of bring it to them. 
but then Bournemouth end up scoring a goal on the counter, which kind of stuns us. You know, very well taken goal. You have to say in that regard, um, Maguire was probably at fault there um, for his inability to turn quickly in the box. That's something we probably have to look at. And the finish as well was pretty tidy, even though, you know, you'd argue that De Gea shouldn't be getting beaten at his near post. I still think Junior Stanislas did well to sort of like give him the eyes and nick it um, where De Gea wasn't looking. But I think in years gone by, we would have essentially lost that match probably. We would probably have lost that match 2-1, 3-1. But throughout the entire game, I never felt um, I was always confident that we were going to come back and sort of hit them. And essentially we did. We were able to score two quick goals before half time, which you know essentially gave us the platform to build upon in the second half. And even when they did get a goal back to make it three two in the second half, we still were able to sort of, sort of like stretch things forward. And I think um it's worth highlighting, of course, Anthony Martial's goal. It's worth highlighting Mason Greenwood's goals and his performances. One on either foot, left foot or right foot. There is no favourite foot of his. But I just think it was an excellent team performance. I just think it was um it's a pleasure now to watch us play um i think in years gone by it was a chore right you didn't actually i think um gary neville said this once before you didn't actually like the players in our squad right they kind of came across a little bit you know they came across a bit pathetic right they were lucky to be there they all sort of like i remember one quote being attributed to phil jones where he was sort of angry that he wasn't starting more right there was a sort of entitlement and arrogance about some of the United players where they felt like just because they play for the club, it was enough already, right? Um, but we didn't necessarily have anything to compare them with, right? Because we that's just all we had. We didn't really know what the good life was like. And then as soon as Bruno Fernandes comes in and the addition of, uh, you know, uh, um, the addition of AWB, the addition of Harry Maguire, the, the, the solidity in our team, the reintroduction of Matic in our team as well, it's made the players who are not performing look worse but it's also allowed us to correctly assess where our missing points are and for that to be addressed hopefully coming in the summer and I guess my overall hope is that we don't do that United thing where we get content and we think we don't need to make any changes right we don't need to make any additional signings because we still need to have players that come off the bench of at least the same quality or in the same caliber of class as the players we have playing on the pitch at the moment and I think that's necessary at the moment um going forward if we want to win the Premier League want to win Champions League we need that um, anything other than that it's just not going to be a success I don't think so So, but yeah good to see us performing well again good to see us back um, essentially beating the teams that we should be beating right the teams that are um, in the second half of the table these are games that if we're you know in the years gone by under size Ferguson we would be winning them without even thinking too much but you know recent years those have become our, sort of like our bogey teams or our, but yeah essentially been our bogey teams that we sort of kind of come up short against right we would beat a, a Tottenham away but we would go to like a Brighton and lose but now we essentially be able to beat these teams home and away and I hope we can build on that next season but yeah great match overall um, again props to Oli he probably proved us all wrong in it he proved he probably proved us all wrong